song. Father God, we come now. Our desire is to hear from your word. And in hearing something that would inspire our lives to give us hope. Whereby we're encouraged to continue running but also believing that God, that things are working to our good. That's right. Pray now, come thy people bless in this hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, today. Today a very beautiful song. And from way back then with the buds um, singing that song with the buds of promise. Today have much greater meaning than they did way back then. Understanding just the significance and the wickedness of the words. God is just awesome. Turn with us to the book of James, chapter 1, if you do not mind. I want to choose for our text reading verses 5 and 6. James chapter 5, chapter 1, if you mind. Verses 5 and 6. When you got it, say, I got it. Amen. Still looking, Sam, still looking. Amen. All right? Looks like everybody is okay. That being said, um, I'm reading to you at this point from a King James version of the Bible. And here are the words that we shall find. Verse number five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally in a breath. And it shall be given him, verse 6, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. From that scripture reading we want to use for a subject at this time, um, a live faith. Okay, that means you can get it. Faith that is alive. Amen. Amen. Now you got it. Amen. What we want to uh, launch into in, in this discourse is the uh, fact that we want to faith we can have. This ain't nothing to do with no sermon, y'all. But I'm 
this chair because we're friends. Um, these glasses I probably had when I was either in my 30s or 40s. But I never throw my glasses away. I just throw them to the side. And God knows that at nighttime I need it. I went to the optometrist Friday, and she said, oh, let me, let me get your glasses and let's see what you're wearing. I said, no, 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 what I'm wearing is broken in the trunk. I didn't go outside and said, no, we got those on. Let's see what your prescription is. I said, listen, you go to the trunk and get the right one, or you need to remember look in your file and see what I had last time. So she looked at the other ones I had. I thought, it's a brown pair.
their question to him is, do you not care that we perish? Jesus is experiencing the same thing that they're experiencing. He's seeing the same thing that they're seeing. But what Jesus is saying to them is, this is what you're concerned about. I can handle this. Have you ever wondered when you've gone, just think about this for a moment. This is my crazy thinking through the week and my introduction to this text. Have you ever wondered why when you go to the doctor with a broken arm, he doesn't seem to be panicking like you? Even if the bone is exposed. It's just like the doctors are saying, hey, let's get an IV going, let's get a room, set up for him, and let's go ahead and try it. It's done. The person with you is, his arm is broken and his bone is exposed. And don't you know, see he's bleeding firstly? The doctor said, let's get this up. We've got to stop the bleeding and we've got to get that bone. Right. That's right. That's right. Because that's what the doctor said. You're in a car, or car, you're in an automobile, not car automobile, that's the same thing. You're in an automobile accident, and your car is all banged up and crushed. It just looks like it's just, just damaged. That's not my car. They ran into the back of me, and they got my car. I mean, it's just, this car is brand new. You take it to a repair shop, and you look at it and say, To you, you don't see how it's going to come back together. But the body shop is like, ma'am, I'm going to tell you that when we pull the, the bumper off, there may be some other damage under that. What? When we look under there, we'll see what needs to be done. Oh my God, my car. You mean Terry can be worse than this? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever wondered why he's not just raging like you? It's because that's what he's special. The stuff that you are going through, the stuff that you are dealing with, and God is who you are in partnership with and saying, God, my money is short. God, I'm sick, and the doctor's giving me a bad report. God is saying, that's what I'm That's what 
being a partner is all about. Have you ever wondered, and I've told you this a hundred times above, have you ever wondered when you wanted to stop, you couldn't stop, you couldn't figure out why you couldn't let go of what you said you were going to let go of? Somehow God put stuff. The wind of God in your back. It pushes you forward. And you were determined. I'm quitting. Because your partner said, nope, you don't quit. We keep going. Thank you. You have to, and I'm using these illustrations to give you imagery that ah, that's what partnership looks like. You and God. Hey, would you prefer being in all states or God? Amen. See, all states can only cover accidents, home, automobile. They can give you a life policy, but God is the giver of life. Now, I don't, I mean, this is not a endorsement for all states. My brother and I were just talking the other day. It's crazy, Kirk, how things work. We grew up going inside Allstate to pay mama's premium. Mama would pull up the Allstate door. And this is before you had all this PayPal stuff. Mama would give us a check, give us a little stuff, go in and pay Mr. Man. We go in, we pay Mr. Man. Hey, I'm here to pay for South Adams. And when we became young adults, guess who was our insurer? Now, my brother was telling me, I don't have Allstate anymore. He named some crazy company. I said, well, I'm still with Allstate. He says, what? you still with Allstate? I said, all of these years, I'm still with Allstate. He said, man, what I don't like about Allstate is Allstate, I had a claim with my roof, blah, 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 and Allstate would not pay it. I said, what I love about Allstate is whether I'm in town or out of town, no matter where I am, I simply call the agent on every occurrence and say, hey, this is Gary. Blah, 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 has happened. I'm out of town. They say, okay, we got you. They hang up. They take care of everything for me. They say, there's going to be a call coming to you from an all-state representative. Just answer the questions. They go, where are you? I had an accident. My truck is at home. We'll send a tow truck to get your car. We'll bring a rental to your house. Why would I leave all-state when all-state takes care of me? But I tell, was telling him was, I like the service I get from all-state. Do I pay more? Yes, I do. But I will pay more knowing that when I'm out of town, I can make a phone call and it takes care of everybody in my house. I can say, hey, my daughter just did A, B, and C. Hey, my son just did A, B, and C. Can y'all take care of that? Carrie, I got you. Keep doing what you're doing. We'll take care of things on this side. I don't mind paying a little bit more for the peace of mind. But even with that, I don't want my life dependency to be on the Allstate. I know I need assurance. That's why I have fellowship with Christ. Insurance is good, but assurance is what I need more. Am I making sense of what I'm saying? So what we have in the text, and I just gave one way off of some stories and stuff like that, and I have a tendency to do that. But what I need you to understand is this. What Jesus is really saying to us that, man, whatever you are facing, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're having to cope with in life, that if we are partners, I got you. I got you. Y'all know what the pamphlet told the baby? Do y'all know what the pamphlet told the baby? Do you know what hug is told the baby? Go ahead. I got you. Well, here's the problem with faith. 
Because if you don't see things with the right perspective, it's going to impact the kind of faith you have. Because if you have the right kind of faith, no matter what you know how you're looking at it, faith tells you it's going to be all right. But if you're walking alone, you will tell you, man, I'm in trouble.
will do this. He said, if any man, verse number five, lack wisdom, if any man of anyone lack, I want to stop right there, anything, that's what I was going to say. If you want something, who do you need to ask? Yes. Because I'm going to tell you this, we are so dependent on other people and less dependent on God. This is a reality, church. We depend on everybody in the world but God. Check this out. You depend on your cell phone to do what? Do your Google search to hold your contacts in it. My mama telephone number right now, I know we had it ever since I was a child. It's 601 859 blah 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 blah. It has always been that number. Here's the crazy thing. Ask me one of my children's telephone number. I couldn't tell you for the world. You know why? Because when they got their phone, I stored it in my phone, and it's under their name, and all I've ever done is go to their name and die. But if I lose my phone and borrow your phone, I'm so dependent on my phone that I am out of contact with my children. Now that seems crazy. How in the world you don't know your children? No. How in the world you can't keep up with your calendar days? Because you're so dependent on your phone. We have become so dependent on things and people that God is almost at the very bottom of our business. What James is encouraging us in this text is to say that if any man wants anything, before you call your friend, before you get your horoscope, before you do anything, let's talk to God first. What James is trying to push us to do is putting God back at the top of our list. If any man lacks wisdom, I know the word is wisdom, but I want to use anything. If any man likes anything, let him ask God. Let me tell you something. You can get what you need from the wrong person. Because there are people in this world that's waiting to get you caught up. They don't want you to be in their vice. The kind of people that say, you know, when you were low, I, I was the one that long for money. You know, if it had not been for you, you, you just bought it from the wrong people. From the same folk that put you on Facebook, they think they live in all bougie, but they had to borrow money from me. They drop your name, but you know, they talk about you. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, faith, if you want to know anything, I'm going to tell you, I'm sick. If you want to know anything, go to Facebook. I'm going to tell you, I can tell you about you on Facebook. I can tell you when you have a great day, I can tell you when you've got a problem with somebody. And if I read it twice, I can tell you who you've got a problem with. James is saying, let's, 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 let's look at God first. And I know I'm making sense of what I'm saying. Because we rely on people more than we rely on. And that reliance has made us to come from a place that we're trusting people more than we're trusting God. Yeah. Amen. That's a danger. Yes, yes, Let me tell you something else that comes out of that. I forgot who said it so far back. Let me tell you something else that comes out of that. <laughs> what comes out of that is that we almost fall to the scheme of Satan. Now you're saying, how is that possible that I fall to the scheme of Satan? Because Satan don't want you trusting God first. That's right. He would rather you trust anybody else and everything else before you consider trusting God. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying, Reverend, you're a little bit too serious. It's not life serious. Every day. Are your problems not real? Have you not been turned away enough to know that if I ask God or if I ask Gary, because I'm going to tell you, if you trust in me, you're in trouble. Yeah. I'm just going to be frank. Yeah. I will be headed to you. If they call me about one of my grandbabies, I'm you turn. <laughs> I'm for real. It, it's a you turn. Hey, I know they get ready to put you in ER. I, I know they see the bones in your body, but they just told me my grandbaby's sick need to be picked up from school. I'm going to come back to you after I go get my grandbaby. Facts. So grandbaby's sick. And my bones are out of my flesh. Which one are you going to do? Go get my girlfriend. <laughs> my priorities. Because <laughs> I'm like, you with the doctors, you're in the best place. I'm going to get my girlfriend. Pastor, you need me to pray about what? Man, that I can survive this surgery that I'm going through. But when you get through them, say, amen. What do you, what do you mean? You just said that I disagree with it. Well, turn around and tell me anything you say you do this. I have to repeat what you said. You said it. I agree. You do. Am I making sense? Now you see why you need to trust God more than you trust me. All right. That's right. You see now why you need to trust God more than you trust me? Now, here's the, here's the, let me give you the caveat. The caveat. 
caveat is this. Who can do more for you, me or God? See, we know these things, but here's the problem. Why aren't we pushing God to the top about this? Amen. And why aren't we practicing what we know? Because again, here's my point. You can have faith, but you can put it in the wrong place. You can put it in the wrong person. And if faith is going to become alive and it's going to be activated in our life, here's the thing that we must know. It's got to be applied in the right place. It's just like I said this morning at 8 o'clock. All of this this morning was rusty. Why would I take Vaseline and put it over here when it needs to be here? See, we have faith, but we'll put faith in people rather than putting faith in God. And let me tell you the beauty about God. God will show you the people you can trust. Yes, Now, here's the thing. Well, Gary, you've been talking a whole lot. Well, how do I get faith working for me? And how does faith really work? You just told me faith doesn't have to be mountain-sized faith. You just told me that it doesn't have to be this increasing faith and so forth. Our confidence in God grows. Our faith, we learn to trust Him. One thing that I know about faith is that in order for it to work for us, what we have to do is pay very close attention to our attitude about what we're facing. If you think you've lost, you've already lost. Amen. You might as well go ahead with the L on your head and go ahead and hit the parade. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a loser. <laughs> How you know I'm a loser? I can't overcome that. Wow. If any man lack anything, let him ask God. you got to know who God is. Yeah. The text tells us God is the one who gives generously. So here is the imagery you need to have. I hate to do this to you, and I know you didn't come prepared to do this, but Sonny, what are you going to do, right? Come here, little brother, come here. Yes, you. It might be an insult to, to Sonny like you, Sonny. This is his. Any man lack anything, let him ask God, and God will give liberally, which is generously. There's another word for generously. It's called overflow. Imagine trying to pack me inside of him. What's going to happen? It's going to run over. Right? When God gives to us, God gives us not only what fills us, but gives us proportionally more. Yes, sir. He gives liberally and upbraided not. Translation. God gives to us without judging us. Now, that's deep. I just messed up and I'm asking God. God is saying, I'm not going to judge you on that. You don't need judging. You need what you need. Now, who would be that kind of partner with God? Amen. Kind of God to say, I'm not going to judge your mess up. Now, y'all don't know, but for me, that's liberating. To know that I have messed up, but I can still go to God. Amen. To know that I'm not everything I should be, but I can still go to God. And God will pour me inside of this. Overflow. Upgrade it not. But he gives. That acts. Verse number six. But ask in faith. Yeah. Amen. Now here's the thing. You got to believe that God can do what you're asking God to do. Amen. Amen. You got to believe that God has the resources to do what you're asking Him to do. Now don't ask me for a whole lot because I don't have a whole lot. Ask God who has everything that you need. He gives liberally and He doesn't judge you because of what you're asking. Because I know for me, I'm talking about personal experience. There's been times that I've wanted to ask for stuff I was just too shy to ask. Mm -hmm. Because have you ever been in this place? I know I know better. Because mm -hmm. God has already done this one time and I messed it up. Mm -hmm. It just don't make sense when you go back to God and ask what he answered. Well, the text tells us that he doesn't judge us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we messed up. Ain't that bitch? Yes. At least it was for me this week. Because I've been thinking about this thing like, man, you mean to tell me that God can give me something, I can mess it up, and God was like, oh, let's not judge each other on this. Let's, let's just go ahead and get things handled. It's like going to the doctor, and he said, doctor, I'm sick. And the doctor said, now, the last time you were here, I gave you prescription medicine. You ain't take all that medicine, because you should be better than this. Now, wait a minute, why didn't you take the medicine? Go home and get the bottle and bring it back. Let's see how many pills you missed. You sit there look at the doctor like, dude, wait a minute, man, I'm sick. I don't pay my money to come up here. Let's talk about what's wrong right now, not about what has happened. Let's talk about what's happening now. 
or using it three months ago. Now I'm just trying to figure this thing out. You, you just, you this and you that. And what you been doing? You been smoking still? Yeah, but listen, I need the medicine. Well, we just want to wait now, because see, you should have done right by yourself. Doctor, you don't like that prescription? Because <laughs> you need what you need. Right? Yes, sir. God doesn't judge us because we're messed up. Mm -hmm. God doesn't judge us because we messed up either. <laughs> I'm both messed up and I messed up. So he then, how does faith really work? Check this out. F for faith. He says you got to focus on God. Stop looking at folk. Because that's yeah. the issue of Because I'm going to tell you, you can look at people so long until you become depressed by what you see. Yes. You can feel like you're doing all the right things in your life, and these folk are living like scoundrels. Yes. Why are they being blessed and I'm not? Yeah. Because you're focused on them. And I'm going to tell you something that happened when you focus on people too long. The head that used to look around will be the head that will drop down. Because you can't figure out why God is showing ungodly folk faith. And it's looked like you don't have faith. God has a reason for doing what he does with the ungodly folk. Because you were ungodly at one time. And it took you waking up to know that God was in your corner even when you weren't in God's corner. That's why you're saved because you realize that God loves you no matter how messed up you were. So God is doing the same thing over yonder, but for a different reason. He's doing something over here. Am I making sense of what I'm saying? Amen. If I'm not, just raise your hand and I'll try to clarify it more. So we have to realize that we have to be focused on God. Here's the thing. Focusing on God means I'm not focusing on my problem. Amen. Because what you got to realize is this. Either I'm coming out of a problem or I'm on my way into a problem. Amen. Because that's the way life is. You're Amen. always coming out, but you're always going into the next thing. Amen. Why are we so shook up when it happens? I'm talking real talk. We have to focus on who God is and what God is capable of. Because when we look at our problems, we always think about, well, woe is me. Say what? Woe is me. What? Woe is me. Not woe is you. Who are you talking to about what's wrong in your life? If you're talking to God, you can say, wow, God has got a great opportunity to do amazing things. Amen. Because there is a message, and I'm done with this, guy. I think my phone might be alone. Is it going off? Is my phone going off? What, what, my, what, what I need you to understand is this. Is that I need you to understand is this about God. What God says to us is get ready to go on. What we need to understand about God is this. I got a purpose for this. What we understand about God is this. I told you that your mess has a message. Yeah. Check this out. The devils want the devils. The devil wants you to quit. Yeah. Yeah. What God knows and what the devil knows that when you in God, when you in God, when take my hand, when you in God. I, you looking at my head, ball, and no glasses on, and trying to figure out how this system works. It's a corner system. Here's the thing here. What the devil knows is that when you partner with God, your chances of winning just went up. Yeah. He knows that there is no way he can stop you when you join up with God. So when the devil is allowed to allow things to happen in your life, like, man, I lost all of my children. God said, I've done that before. Who? Job. Job lost all his children. But God, I lost all of my possessions. Did that before. Who? Joe. God, my spouse is dead and the income is gone. I did that before. The widow that sold all and paid her bills and had money left over. Yeah. God, I've been wondering, Lord, for so long, 40 years, I don't even know what my purpose is. God done that too. Children in the wilderness and children of Israel. God, listen, I ain't got no food. I ain't got to done that before too. Yeah. Yeah. So what the devil knows is that everything that you're up against, God has already had the rehearsal. He's already done it. But what you don't know is that God has already done it. So what the devil is saying to you is, listen, quit on God. God said, listen, let's win. Let's show the devil we got this. Let's show the devil we're going to win. Let's show the devil we're going to keep on going. Let's show the devil we are our best when we are together. So what happens when your mouth is longer than your money? Hmm. <laughs> Give us our daily bread. Yes. God knows how to take care of you day by day. Amen. Amen. I told you to move off of me. So here's the point. You know why it's going off, right? I don't want y'all to think, okay, now wait a minute. He's, he's setting the law. I am. You 
tell y'all something. I can give the preachers for hours. Yes, ma'am. I will preach an hour flat. And it seems to me like I just did 15 minutes. <laughs> for real, for real. This is a real conversation. I preach, and I preach till I'm through. And, man, it doesn't bother me. You know why? Because I walk. <laughs> I walk out a little bit. So I ain't tired. So I don't walk good. But y'all tired. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? You're tired. So my objective for 2019 was we'll trim it back to at least 45 minutes. Then we're going to try to get back to 30 minutes. So that's my first objective. I'm, sh I'm shaving back little by little. So what just happened is I have a 30 minute alarm, which lets me know I only have 15 more minutes. All right? Y'all good? And then when it's here next time, it's going to be like at 25, which lets me know that I got five more minutes. So I'm kind of growing in that direction. I ain't crazy. I know that y'all behind me take us a whole hour. Y'all tired and y'all ready to go. But I be mean, having so much fun preaching. I enjoy it. I love it. Right. So this thing, being focused on God, this, this thing that we're done, we're done, because we're we'll doing we'll do the A-I-T-H thing. Somebody can help me spell. Okay, here we go. Focus on God. This is what I need you to do this week. I need you to look at whatever you got going on. I need you to look at it and face man. But realize that whatever you're looking at, you and God can win this thing. Amen. I don't want you looking at the folk around you because I'm going to tell you, it is a mess when you look at folk around you. You will get disturbed by what you see. Because you will see folk on Facebook over in the Caribbean with your money that they owe you. And you try to struggle to get your life kept on you. Know what I'm saying? And that will be an issue for you. But you got to realize that what you release to people, that it's a dead seed and that God will give you a harvest from the seed. I'm telling you, it's about attitude. It's about attitude. It's like when your attitude is adjusted right, it begins to lift the burdens off your shoulders that you're able to move along with agility. Agility being more easy. You got it? So, let's focus on God. When you look at your great big problem, don't say, whoa, man, why me? Look at that thing and say, man, this is an opportunity for God to do amazing things. So, here is my right moment. And God will use me to be a star character. Amen. Because I'm a vessel of God. I'm an instrument of God. I am the planting of God. I am the righteousness of God. So no matter how foul it looks, God has picked me to be a part of this demonstration. Because you know what the ultimate plan is, don't you? The devil wants you to quit. He wants you to go to bed tonight and cry about it. He wants you to feel like you're lonely and that you're broken. And eventually feel like you are not worth it. Because it will come out that way. And when you start feeling worthless, you start allowing anything to happen to you. And you will start allowing anything to come into you. But when you know you're worth it. You heard the songwriter said, I was worth saving. He sacrificed his life for me. Yes. Because he thought I was worth it. The focus this week of faith. If God's going to do it, look at God. If I'm going to do it, look at me. But I'm going to tell you that. Look at God. And even though God used people, he will point you to the right people. To the right people. So I'm going to stop there. I hope that what I said made sense to you to at least a little bit. Has made a little bit of sense to you. Because I think that we can grow when we stop looking at people. Because you don't know why God is doing what he's doing. You don't have to do that. But what you can know is that my time is coming. And when my time comes, not even the devil, not even the devil can stop me.
T-O-R-I. See, I look at you this morning, you spell it. But if you can't spell it, victory. It's in the sign. Why do I close on the note this way? Because there's been moments in my life when I didn't have the words that I had. And I still want to communicate with God that I need victory. That good sign she told me. The V, tell me, V, I, C. 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 T. Stop me over. V, I, C. T O R R Y. See how hard that is to spell? But check this out. Victory. There's been times that I've worked for you to get God with no words. But there was a lane. God has been a program that I want to do. I've heard it. I need victory. God, I'm going through so much. Words will escape us. But we communicate with God and you and God. That may not make sense to you, but there are people that have come to our church and sit on the front row that we communicate through sign language. And if they are part of us, we need to try to share and have communication with them. So that's just my exercise. So if you can't get your words out, get your signs out. Amen. Get your signs out. Amen. Amen. That's my time for the Listen, you may have came into the room today.